So I think you all know that today is Lincoln's birthday. And here we celebrate the day of one who is supposed to feed the slaves of our land. On Monday we will celebrate the birthday of one who will feed us all, including the slaves, from British tyranny or control. And yet today, after these many, many years, we find the entire nation rising up demanding freedom. Feed them now, feed them now. You see all these fellows in their demonstrations. And that goes not only for the minority group, but for the entire country. They want peace. Well, the freedom sought by worldly men where they seek exemption from all external restraints can be realized only by union with that pattern man who achieves full and complete freedom. Without union with that pattern man, there is no freedom. No matter how they're screaming for it, and they're all screaming for it, they will not find it, they will not get it, until union with the pattern man. For freedom is the gift which he, by union with him, bestows upon his brother. And there is no other way out of the maze. So you and I are blessed at this moment because we are on the verge, if we have not received union with him, we are on the verge of receiving union with the risen Lord. There are those today who are only starting the game. For the gain is from innocence through experience to freedom. For well, innocence is simply defined as lack of the acquaintance of good and evil. They can't discriminate. Lack of any understanding of good and evil. We see it today in our midst where a girl, white pigment, in spite of all the so-called evolutionists, who cannot discriminate between good and evil. She could murder eight people in cold blood, cut them into pieces when they plead for mercy, and beg to be spared. And she, and she said, but she didn't do wrong. Whatever she did, it was right. If she did it, it was right. No concept of good and evil. He only begins the journey now, and yet he's in a garment, white skin, long, long, straight hair, not kinky. And people think she is an evolution out of the dark skin. What nonsense. Here is a child beginning the journey. He hasn't the slightest concept of good and evil. She has thousands of years of a journey before her, where she has to go through the furnaces and experience all the things that you have experienced. But in the end, as we are told so beautifully by Blake, whom God afflicts for secret ends, he comforts and heals and calls him friends. So in the end, she will be redeemed. She will have union with the risen man, the pattern man. And she will experience the entire story as told us in the gospel. So when today they're all demanding freedom, demanding this, demanding that, they will never know what freedom really is until they have union with the pattern man. And when that pattern is like taking a seal and impressing it upon wax prepared to receive the impression, 
And so when he embraces you, or in whatever form, you have union with him. He leaves his impress upon you, just like the seal upon wax or clay. And then that impress unfolds within you. As it unfolds within you, you are set free. And you aren't really set free until you find the sun. For the sun makes you free. You are free indeed. Whose son are you, young man? Go find out whose son that you be. For I want to find his father. And so the son one day is found. And he stands before you. And you know without any uncertainty. He is your son. And he knows you are his father. Then you are free. Free indeed. So it doesn't really matter what happens thereafter. But it starts from plain innocence, where a complete lack of any equation with good and evil. Then we pass through experience. Well, experience is actually living, living through something, so that we now know it firsthand, rather than by per se. We all live through that experience last Tuesday morning. Now, our friends call us, we had 12 calls from the East, New York, Cincinnati, Jersey, and so on, to ask about us. Well, we can tell them, nothing happened, a few things were broken, not much, no damage to the house. A couple of pieces of china, a few vases, and of course the things that fell off the wall with the balls put them back. But there's really no, no damage, but we had the experience of the sick, and we all had it. I can tell them, but that's fair thing, as far as they're concerned. We had the experience. They only know it from hearsay. So experience is something that one has to live through. To experience is to actually live through something. So that you have a first-hand knowledge of it. Rather than have someone tell you about it, so that your knowledge of it is only hearsay. You're not a witness if it's hearsay. And freedom is simply liberating the slave. It's really self-realization. It is a complete self-fulfillment in a spiritual sense. And when I speak of self-realization, I'm not speaking of any organization that calls itself a self-realization. I'm speaking about actual self-realization. When you discover who you are, and you will never in eternity discover who you are, until the sun stands before you. And then you know who you are. And then you are set free. For bear in mind, it was God who was crucified. It was God who was buried. It was God who rose from the dead. It was God who was born from above. It was God who found David, and it was God David called my father. It was God whose body was split in two from top to bottom, and it was God who ascended into heaven like a fiery serpent, and it was God on whom the dove descended. There is only God in the world. So when we go back into scripture and the journey begins in the third chapter of Genesis and we read the story of the serpent and the serpent is asking a question of Eve. Did God tell you that you should not eat of the trees of the garden? And he said no. That I should not eat of the tree in the midst of the garden, but all the other trees. Did he tell you that you would die? 
because you will not die. But if you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will know good and evil. You will become as God, knowing good and evil, if you eat of it. And it seemed good to her to eat of it, so she ate of it, and then had the experience of good and evil. If you look at the definition of the word serpent, it is defined as to learn from experience. It is in your concordance, if it's a good one. I am quoting from James Fong's concordance. It's a different word from another serpent used in scripture. This serpent is to learn from experience. There's no other way to learn it. The other time the word serpent appears is this the seraph, the seraphim, which means a fiery being, a being set on fire. That's when you are sent into heaven. That's the fiery being that comes out. The entire Old Testament is nothing more than a shadow. It is an adumbration, the foreshadowing of things to come. The New Testament is an active parable. For well, a parable is a story told as though it were true, leaving the one who hears it to discover its fictitious character and then learn its message and either accept it or reject it. So the story told of Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is the pattern man. It's an actual pattern. And when in one, and Paul implies, if he ever wrote that first letter to Timothy, some scholars question that he wrote it. But Paul is not a person. Paul is a state of consciousness. So whoever wrote it is talking about Paul. That's the state. And he tells you that I am the former. It was first in me that the example was set forth. And here he tells you, but he doesn't spell it out. The actual pattern. But he tells us that it was in him. He was the foremost in which this pattern, this example, he used the word example, but the King James Version uses the word pattern. I prefer that. While the Revised Standard Version uses the word example. In him was the first, the foremost, where this example took place. Now, the pattern is, as I told you earlier, that God and God alone was the one who was crucified. Because I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So I am alive by a certain sacrifice. That is God, because God and the Son are one. In this sense. So here, I am that Son, because it's all the sons to form God. And we the sons came down into this world. And here I am crucified on this garment, the only cross that God ever wore. And I am buried in the tomb of this garment. And in that tomb, as told me in the 8th chapter of Ezekiel, I have made, oh what horrible images I have engraved upon the interior of that tomb. If you read the 8th chapter of Ezekiel, and you say to the Son of Man, Son of Man, make a hole. And so I made a hole. Now he said, go in. Go in and see what the elders of Israel are doing. I went in and I saw all these engravings upon the interior of this wall. And they made horrible things. And they worshipped beasts, birds, and horrible things. That's what everyone does in this world. Rather than 
to fall in love with the pattern. But they didn't know the pattern. Now the pattern has been sent to you. The pattern has a prayer in actual living reality. Will you accept the pattern? And the pattern is, give up all these things that formerly you worship and thought that they would save you and they would do this for you and fall in love with the pattern. For Jesus Christ is the pattern man. And one day you are embraced by the pattern if you be male. The other could be in another form of embrace. But it's the same impression left upon the one embraced. Left upon the one that was embraced in love. And so when the act is over, he is sent into the world, and then during this journey, this impression unfolds within the individual who was embraced, on whom that impression was made, like the seal on wax. And then you know who Christ is. For Christ comes to us as one completely unknown. Yet one who after the embrace lets us experience who he is. And we experience it in ourselves. And it's not a he anymore. I am. So the whole thing is all within the individual. And he unfolds the entire story as told us in scripture. That's the only freedom that man will really ever truly enjoy. So you can have a Lincoln's birthday to set slaves free, and a Washington's birthday to set all Americans free, and yet all Americans still crying out for freedom, for liberty. And all the minority groups, blacks, Chicanos, everything else crying out to be liberated. And you will not in eternity be liberated, save through union with the pattern man. The pattern of man who has achieved complete freedom. So when you're embraced by him, you're embraced by freedom itself. And that interest then unfolds within you, and you are as free as the wind. You find the one being that really sets you free is the Son of God. And he stands before you and you know who he is, or you know who you are. Therefore, it's a complete self realization. It's a complete spiritual fulfillment. And then you know. So it doesn't matter what happens thereafter earthquakes, volcanoes, wars, anything in the world. You have reached the end. And your only feeling then will be for those who are now talking to journey. Instead of condemning and asking for the gas chamber, you look upon this little thing, it's like a thing, just starting, only now tasted of the fruit of good and evil, and can't quite discriminate as yet. He doesn't know. And here it is placed for 6,000 years, of a horrible thing. But as Blake said, do not let yourself be intimidated by the horror of the world. Everything is ordered and correct and must fulfill its destiny in order to achieve perfection. Follow this path and you will receive from your own ego a deeper perception of the eternal beauty of creation. You'll also receive an ever-increasing relief from that which now seems so sad and terrible. So, he starts it, and you and I are in it. And we'll wait for her after the unnumbered years that she has to travel. For she has to go through all that you've gone through. But God in his infinite mercy has hidden it from your memory. Hidden it and still allows you to condemn and do the things that normal men will do when they read these things in the paper. 
Why did it happen to me? Why did it happen to so and so? And yet we all shared a common experience that Tuesday the morning. Some had a greater blow than others. But we all shared the experience, and you can't deny it. Well, that is something to be grateful for. You experienced it, and you're made up of what you've experienced. Others cannot be witnesses to these things if they can only be those who say, Well, I heard it say. So I heard there was, as our friends call it, our sister in laws from the East, my niece from Cincinnati, others from different areas, and they're all calling. I'm quite sure one from Greece will come next week will be writing in. He can't get through by telephone. And she'll be asking all kinds of things because people go out and they try to scare you all the more. One call from New York to say, we just heard on the TV and we've been trying all day to get you. And some of thought, they're all of thought, strangely enough. And he says this is only the first one. The big one is coming. And of course, it puts her right into a tizzy, as though this little thing knows what he's talking about. He didn't predict this one, but he's going to predict the next one. And then he gives his name and all the little degrees behind his name, and he teaches over Caltech, so he is an authority. No one knows. No one knows. And whenever it comes, then it comes. And I tell you, let it come. You have experienced what only a very small section of our country experienced this last Tuesday morning. And life is made of experiences. So the serpent simply means to learn by experience. And we listen well. And the fruit tasted good. And we came out into a world of experience. Because the journey is from innocence through experience to freedom. And that freedom is to awaken as God himself. So we're being plucked from a garden. As I saw it so clearly one night. This infinite field of human flowers, like sunflowers. And yet I knew as I looked at them, and they were so beautiful, I knew that I enjoyed a far greater measure of freedom than all of them put together. For there they were, beautiful, and seemingly perfect forever. If one smile, all smile. If the wind moves one, it moves all in the same direction. Whatever one did, all did. And I felt myself free to do what I wanted to do. I could walk if I wanted to, I could turn around if I wanted to, I was not moved by a chorus. And there was simply a chorus, all moving in unison. And I had been sucked before that. And I ate of the tree of knowledge, of good and evil, and came out into a world, and started, and the first act was murder. And Cain killed Abel. And he did it through jealousy. And here is an act of jealousy. He envied their position in the world, envied their wealth, envied what they had, and felt no remorse in killing them. But none whatsoever, even to this moment. But he just eaten of the tree of knowledge. And our great anthropologist will tell us she is so advanced beyond the black man from Africa. All the great unknowns of, say, Peru, the great Indians that are still in the dark ages, like Ponce to He is only just a player in these garments that are forever. For all these things are forever. This is part of the structure of the universe, and he simply assumed a certain garment. And for the first time, she appears in the world. Came from the world of innocence into the world of experience. And now she is faced with thousands of years of horror. 
But in the end, that merciful God will step beyond and redeem her into his body by union. And there will be union, and then the infant will be left, and that infant is the way of escape. And it begins with awakening within the grave, the grave being your star. And then coming out of that star, and that is your birth. And then discovering God's son as your son, and that's your freedom. And then comes the great fit of your own body from top to bottom. And then your strength as a fiery servant back into heaven from which you descended. And then comes the seal of approval to the saint of the judge, which smothers you in love because it approves your entire journey. And all will be done. So here, you are at the end. I can tell you that. You are at the end. And he is at the beginning. And so all that you can really pour out for is nothing but compassion. Pity. Because he's beginning what now you are ending. You've gone through it, you've done the same thing. And so what I quoted earlier from that statement of Blake as he revealed it to one called Max Beckman. And in vision, Max Beckman saw him and hailed him. He said, there was that great genius. And he waved to me and hailed him. And then he said, do not let yourself be intimidated by the horror of the world. And then he told him why. For everything is ordered and correct, I must fulfill its destiny in order to achieve perfection. And then he asked him to please follow this path. And if you follow this path, you will receive from your own ego a deeper perception of the eternal beauty of creation. You will also receive an ever-increasing relief from all that now seems so bad and delicate. So here, we celebrate Lincoln's birthday, but you and I are searching for, and some of us have already found, the real one who set his dream. For he didn't set the minority dream, for they're still begging for freedom. And Washington didn't set us free because we're still asking for, well, at least financial freedom. You're burdened with taxes, you're burdened with this, you're burdened with everything. And so, he didn't set us free. And not a thing in this world can set us free but union with the pattern man, who has already achieved true freedom. And union with him is an impression on us like the seal on prepared wax. And the perfect impression is there, then we bear the excess image of the invisible God. And because it's rare, when we are sent into the world then, to tell what happened to us, in that interval, that impress begins to unfold within us. And we know who we are. We are the God who was in the beginning crucified, who was in the beginning buried in the human power and who rose from that grave and who came out and they call him born from above and who found God's only begotten son that was nearest to his heart that did all his will and his name was David and David called him Father and whose body was split from top to bottom, and then who, after the split, ascended like a fiery serpent into heaven, and then that dove descended upon him, and then he knew exactly who he was. He bore the burden 
for the allotted time as you have borne it for the allotted time and then the long lost rank is now restored and the God you were before you descended is the God that you have returned to only augmented by the experience which you could not know without the experience for you are immortal and you would not know a thing concerning death unless you experience death how would you know it? say to her say so I could tell all the gods of the world about death what would they know about death? they are immortal, they cannot die but you and I came down and experienced death we go back augmented beyond the wildest dream of what we were prior to our descent for we have experienced death beyond speaking from here say we are experiencing things and therefore we will speak as true witnesses I can't be a witness and that I can speak from experience I go back as a witness to my victory over death so that's what we are this day in this wonderful world of ours so this symbol of freedom and everything in the world is a symbol anyway Lincoln is but a symbol of the freedom of minority what a symbol of the freedom of a nation from a foreign control but Jesus Christ is the pattern man that is the true liberator of the world and until one has union with him he cannot find freedom but he cannot find the sun and when the sun sets you free you are free indeed so we are told in Hebrews although he was a son yet he learned obedience to the things he suffered although he was a son he learned obedience to the things he suffered you are the one spoken of for the entire Old Testament is simply the shadow the copy of the eternal thing and the New Testament is its fulfillment but told in the form of a parable and you and I have to experience the true story of that parable and when we tell it those who are still along the way they reject it they can't quite grasp it they can't believe it so they reject it that's all right don't give up you tell it because you speak from experience if you're speaking from experience you tell it and a friend of mine called me from Cincinnati because he tried to get through and tried to get through and I couldn't no one ran phone as far as I'm concerned no one was calling he said I've been trying for two days to get through when he finally got through he asked me to explain well I said as far as I'm concerned you are perfectly healthy I wrote just about one minute before six I went to the bathroom I was only there a minute less than a minute before I could get back to my bed the thing started and as you know from experience how intense it was it came so suddenly it was no rumble just one solid mass of shaking but from every direction so I said as far as I'm concerned somebody held our house and shook it in all directions like a doll taking a little rag thing and shaking it and so I could barely touch the bed when I heard my wife say don't walk, don't get off the bed she didn't know I was off the bed don't get off the bed, stay just where you are don't come in here because you can't walk, as you know you can't walk you just simply, it's come north, south, east and west all together plus some other direction and so here you're helpless you can't shoot the one who's doing it you can't find anyone to get even with them you have to sit and take it you're taking something and you can't find that culprit who's doing it and then all of a sudden you start picking up the glasses and picking up the dishes and picking up the things that he did seemingly and it's all prepared for us so I can speak from experience and I could tell him over the phone but he can only repeat what I said and it's only hearsay he doesn't know from experience 
give thanks that you now know from experience. Merely one day will return and the entire horrible drama that you have gone through, playing the actor in it all, sometimes the victim, sometimes the culprit. You play them all, and at the end you come out and because you play them all, you forgive all. But it took all to awaken you to the being that you really are. For the purpose of this whole journey is to awaken us, the Son, to fatherhood. That's how the Father rises to a higher level, by taking his Son who comprise him, and putting him through the horrors of the world which is himself, because he's made up of his Son. And then putting us through all that we go through, he, the one Father, comprised of the Son, is lifted to a higher level. And we have expanded beyond the wildest thing by the experiences in this world of horror. So, when they are seeking freedom, and you will see them tomorrow morning, set up after you find another demonstration and another demonstration. And this one wants freedom and that one wants freedom. And you ask them, what do you mean by freedom? They can't tell you. They mean freedom from external restraint. Freedom to do anything they want without any restraint. And there is no such freedom until union with a pattern man who is all love, who would hurt nothing in the world. Until that union takes place, you will never enjoy the freedom that you are seeking, which is complete freedom from all external restraints. And you will find them, whether you buy a minority group or any other group in the world. Fortunately for me, I have never called myself one among the minorities. I came here as a stranger to America, but not from the day I landed did I ever think myself other than one with America. I never called myself an American Barbadian or an American West Indian. It never occurred to me to have this hyphenation in my world. I either am an American or I am not one. As long as I'm living here and became an American, I'm an American. But to call myself a Mexican American or a Black American or a White American, or that would be stupid. And so I am, while I'm here, I, by adoption, I'm an American, equal with anyone born here. The forest without a garment that I wear. But when all these call themselves by this thing, a Japanese American, a Chinese American, a Mexican American, I can't see why. Why don't we drop the little hyphenation and just simply be American? And then find this wonderful story concerning the only one that can set you free and seek him beyond all things and don't substitute some little thing for him. The whole vast world has substituted these a worshipful image that made all kinds of images and a worship it instead of seeking of all things this internal word which is only a pattern. Now let us go into the science. any questions please
person. Yes. The Bible implies it by saying a thousand days or a thousand years as a year in the eyes of God. And if he took six days in which to form his image, well then we conclude it's six thousand years for the journey. But it's not stated just in that manner. It implies in Peter's letter and in the first chapter of Genesis on the sixth day. When Peter tells us that one day in the Lord's vision is equal to a thousand years of men, it is implied. Any other questions? If there aren't any other questions, well then, we call it a day. Thank you. Good night.